Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Today we're update, updating a popular video blog from the past, how to create a CSS sprite navigation bar. In part one today, we'll start by preparing the sprite graphic that we'll take into part two next week for coding. So let's just recap on what CSS sprites are and why they can be useful for web designers. Essentially, a CSS sprite image will contain multiple images, whether they're different states of a navigation bar, like what we're going to be looking at, or whether they're a culmination of icons, navigation rollovers and things. But essentially, you're looking at one image that contains and is uh, used for various things. So let's take a look at the Apple navigation bar. You'll see that as a user, if you hover your mouse over the various tabs, and even if you sort of click, you'll get various what we call states of the navigation bar. Now, all of these uh, different versions are contained within what we call a CSS sprite image. You'll see here in the example, there are four states to the Apple navigation, and Apple have saved this image as one single image that's known as a sprite. And using CSS, we simply load this image once, and we, um, by using CSS, position the background accordingly so that we only see certain parts of this image at any one time. Let's also check out the new play.com, uh, an awesome new HTML5 site. They've got exactly the same thing going on, CSS Sprite Navigation Bar. The only difference between play.com and Apple is that play.com use real text in their navigation, like you'll see me managing to highlight it here, whereas Apple actually embed the typography and their logo using uh, images, obviously, from whenever they've created it in Photoshop. So play.com within their sprite, as you can see here, there's no uh, text on the navigation, they use real text and Apple flatten their sprites with the text on. Now it doesn't matter whether you want to uh, use this tutorial to create either or, we'll show you how to do both, whether you want to embed the, uh, the text for your navigation as part of the sprite or whether you want to add it on afterwards as real text like play.com have done with their website. It's also important to point out, you know, even if you look at play.com, um, you know, a great new HTML5 website. Their website's fairly straightforward, and to be fair, you could probably achieve something very similar to this with CSS3 and cut the images out altogether, potentially increasing load times. But it's still too early, in my opinion, um, to to do this just purely because um, people with browsers, older browsers, i.e. 6 through 8, are going to struggle to see the website in the nature that you, the web designer, intended. Well, let's, uh, let's head over to Photoshop. You can see here I've got a example website called Sunbird, and you'll see that I've um, designed in Photoshop how I'd like the navigation and also the hover state to work um, when people roll over, for example. So taking this design from Photoshop into CSS is obviously now the tricky part. So the first thing that you uh, want to do, let's just zoom back out, is I'd recommend um, taking your navigation away onto a separate file and leave the design behind and work on it separately. So what I've done here, just to save time, is I've prepared two, uh, two groups of layers for my uh, navigation bar. You'll see the uh, state before you hover your mouse over, and then you'll see the state when you hover your mouse over. So hopefully you'll be okay getting uh, your two states created in Photoshop. And easy thing to do, like I said, is bring them over to a blank canvas like I've done here. And you'll see I've got two identical versions of the navigation, with the exception of the addition of the brown background. And I've also inverted the text to simulate what I want to happen to each individual part of the navigation. So the next thing to do is remove all of the white space from the canvas. So first thing we'll do is move the two states so that they are close together and touching and are exactly above and below each other. And then just to remove the uh, excess space I've got the canvas, I'm just going to move in and using the marquee tool, I'm just going to select my sprite and crop. So there we have the CSS sprite image ready to be saved and taken over 
to start working on in uh, CSS and HTML. So the first version we're going to make is going to be using the text as part of the graphic, just like Apple, but we'll save a second version as well without the text and show you how to do both to add it back in as real text. So let's go to File and Save for Web. And I'm going to save my graphic as a GIF. Okay, so here's the first one then, and I'm just going to save this. Let's uh, pop it on the desktop. Let's call this one with text. And I'm just going to uh, hide the layers. And make a second version called without text. OK, so it's as simple as that. Um, we're now ready to take our two sprite graphics over to Dreamweaver and using HTML and CSS will complete our navigation bar. Thank you for watching this week's video. Don't forget the tutorial is concluded next week with the CSS that you'll need to finish your sprite navigation bar.